All right, what's on the bench today? Uh, this was sent into uh, the channel for a review. Uh, this is a Miniware DS212. It's a dual channel mini scope. I've reviewed a bunch of mini scopes. I don't think I've reviewed any two channel mini scopes. So it'll be interesting to see this thing. Now, this is by Miniware. Um, I did a review on a, a Miniware uh, DC load, which I really like. Um, so uh, yeah, check out check out that review. Now before I do the review, I must read the email I got along with this. Now, um, when I do reviews of products, um, I'm very selective of which ones I choose. And if a company is very pushy, I'll 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 not work with them. Or a company wants me to do some type of advertisement inside of the video. They want me to show the company's logo, or they want me to have an in-video advertisement or something like that. I refuse all of those ads. I will not do those. The only ads that the only reviews that I'll do, if somebody sends me something, I can give a fair and partial review on it, and then I will as a benefit to that company, I will then provide a link down in the description. And that's it. That's as far as my channel goes. Now, does, does some companies understand that? No. Does this company understand that? Let me, let me read the uh, email that this company sent me when they sent the uh, product to me. Thank you so very much. I will mail the DS-212 oscilloscope to you within this week. We will not affect the reviewer's opinions on our products. If you don't like it, you can criticize it, scold, or even throw it in the trash can in the review video. Also thanking blah, 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 blah. So <laughs> now that's standing behind your product, right? Send your product. I'll give a fair review. Hey, that's the best, that's the best you can get, right? So anyway, yeah, let's open this up and review it. All right. Things in here. Whoa, whoa, it is much smaller than I thought it was going to be. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness. Wow, is it tiny? Okay, it's smaller than a, yeah, it's smaller than a, uh, a Nano VNA or Tiny SA. It's, it's, wow, it's tiny. Um, it is uh, 100 millimeters by 55 millimeters by 9 millimeters. And uh, it's metal. It feels very quality. Nice shiny front and everything. Wow. <laughs> okay. Good first impression. Well done, guys. Uh, now it comes with two scope probes and these scope probes are better than the other ones I've been receiving. So they use these little connectors. I don't know what these connectors are called. They're not SMB. They're not SMC. They're not any of those SM things. They're, they're different and they plug right in. Now all the other uh, probes that I've gotten from companies, scope probes I've gotten for companies, they send me um, BNC probes and then they give me an adapter and that just adds a whole bunch of length to it It makes it prone to to kill your device and stuff. So these are actually made Made for this product. They have molded in connectors on the uh, scope probe. So yeah, well done again All right, let's put the uh, Clip if you ever if you ever done this before these little ground leads clip on and off you can remove them So they, this one comes up separate. You just, you just pop them onto that little uh, silver ring there. Okay. So, uh, this button says it's a go button. Let's see. Go. Oh, here we go. Uh, here, this is off and I slide it over. It's a slidey thing. Oh, wow. It's immediately on and, uh, wow, it's going to be a small display. So if you're, uh, visually impaired, this might not be the product for you, but, um, uh, it is a nice looking color display. It's very crisp, right? A lot of displays look like they're in the glass a little bit. This one looks like, looks like it's right on the surface of the glass. So that's, that's nice. I like a shiny, shiny um, glass instead of frosted glass or, uh, yeah. All right, so we have to figure out how to use this thing. 
there's a menu wheel, I guess. And then there's a select wheel. Oh yeah. So this goes up and down and this one goes side to side. That's so you can, you can change things. You can change like the time base and stuff. I'm going to have to figure out how to hold this thing while we use it. Um, but let's take a look at the other things before we actually start using it. It's uh, rechargeable. There's a USB, a micro USB. Uh, would have been nice if it was USB-C, but micro USB. Um, let's see here. Warning. Uh, 40 volt maximum on the input, so be aware of that. There's really not much else going on here. There is a play button, like it's a, like you can record something and play it. But I don't know what that is. I might have to read the manual on this one, but uh, let's see what we can get done without the manual. Uh, yeah, let me rearrange things here. Um, okay, uh, so I have connected up the probe to the uh, to the oscilloscope, and I'm at a hundred kilohertz right now. Uh, and this is claimed to be a one megahertz oscilloscope. So let's go to one megahertz. One megahertz, and yeah, it is not happy with that. Let's see, time base. Yeah, yeah, it's not happy with happy with that. Let's go to 500 megahertz or 500 kilohertz. And it's a bit jumpy. And we'll go to 250. Oops. We'll go to 250 kilohertz. And then we'll go to 100 kilohertz. And time base. Yeah, so it's working great at 100 kilohertz. You can get a picture higher than that, but it's not going to be a nice stable picture. So at least up to 100 kilohertz. Um, let's see, what else do we have? Let's see, well, there's two channels. So let's try to do a two channel thing. This will take me a second. All right, so let's go to channel B. Make that bigger. There we go. I have it running at half of the frequency and they're, I don't think they're phase related. So it's going to be jumping around here a bit. So let's take a look at doing, this isn't touch screen, is it? No, it's not touch screen. Uh, let's think, look at doing triggering here. Ah, there we go. I just changed the uh, trigger level and uh, everything got clean. So yeah, they are phase related. Um, so they are okay. I can go back to the time base now and zoom out. Yeah, that's nice. And then I can go to make one a uh, different shape. Okay. Let's go to uh, something like a, make one a sync pulse. Yeah. These little scopes have problems with the sampling rate and stuff, and uh, they're not going to give you a clean, clean version of the sync pulse. Okay. Let's see here. Let's go to channel one. Let's go for position. Here's position. Wait a minute. Position and then I can, yeah, I can change that so I can move it up. All right. And then I can, uh, go to channel B position. I can move that down. All right. Uh, probe times one. Oh yes. Yeah, I have times 10 probe. You can change that. Oops. Change that. So it's a bit fiddly running all the menus and stuff, you know, but um, once you get it set up, probably with everything you like, it, it'll be there. Um, I noticed there was some cursors that you can set. Uh, enable. Yeah. All right, so I think it's time to uh, maybe take a look at uh, the menu. What is X windows? Depth. Uh, depth. Oh, you can change the depth of the window. That's interesting. 
you can see it right down there on the red so you're seeing part of it so you can take a snapshot then move around probably so that's interesting i'll leave depth up at eight all right included in the box was an allen wrench which seemed unusual i looked a lot of times they'll give you a tool to to change uh, the scope pump, scope compensation will give you a little uh, tweaker tool. And I thought, well, maybe I just missed it or something. But the only screws that I could find were on the back plate of the uh, machine. And when you take the plate off, it exposes channel one, channel two input amplifiers. And there is the scope compensation on the PC board. So you can compensate the probe. Um, by opening up the machine and then you, you then you're done so yeah so that's interesting let's let's see if we can't do that one of the problems is that the that's on the back side you need to look on the front side um, <laughs> while you're doing it so that's going to be a bit tricky but yeah let's uh let's turn this thing on and uh let's um put a square wave in it and see if we can compensate. That's pretty cool. All right, give it a try. Hey, well, there's the battery. Oops. Oops. I just tap. I just uh, accidentally tapped the uh, the wheel when I went to the other side. Oh man, this is. Oh, there we go. Oh. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. And then maybe this is amplitude gain or something. Hmm. I don't know. Uh, but it looks like you can tweak it in because that looks like a fine, that looks like a fine signal to me now. Um, so it is doable. Um, I don't really see the instructions in the manual on, on actually doing this, but, um, does have the compensation right there and you can get a nice square square waveform now let's try other waveforms make sure i didn't screw everything else up uh and let's see here let me change the frequency here to 10 kilohertz and we'll go to the time base and there's my little sync pulses and they are pulsing up and down because of the, like I said, the actual, the way these uh, things work. Let me look, let me set the trigger a little different. Let me set the trigger up high. Is that all the trigger go? Wait a minute. Trigger. Threshold. There we go. I can move it way up there. That's better. Get rid of this and then let's zoom out with the time base nope yeah all of these little scopes have this problem so yeah that looks pretty good okay let's read some of the data sheet um ac or dc coupling one megahertz Ah, uh, we'll give it, we'll give it maybe half of that. Um, 10 mega samples per second, one mega ohm input, plus minus 40 volts, 10K, mem 8K memory depth, horizontal, vertical sensor to 20 millivolts. That's not bad. Um, you can get other functions here. V1 minus V2, T1 minus T2. Um, modes, trigger mode, synchronous mode, auto measurement. Uh, Built-in signal generator, 10 hertz to 1 megahertz. Yeah, so that other connector will do that. 320 by 420 pixels. 320 by 240. I'm sorry, 320 by 240. Um, let's see here. Switch app upgrade modes. Uh, to enter DFU mode, so I guess you can upgrade it sometime in the future. Um, interface. Uh, we looked at all of that. Getting started. Fine. Um, hide menus. 
You are able to uh, save the images, I believe. I don't know. I'm not going to show that on this camera, but yeah, firmware upgrading, charge. Oh, here we go. So save parameters, save bitmap, save data, save buffer, save CVS, load, load. Yeah, so you can get them, uh, save things in and out. Uh, so what is my conclusion? Um, it's really, really small. So that's either good for you or bad for you. Um, it is two channel, a true tool channel. So that's very, very nice. The display is good, but small. I don't like having to open it up to do this. I'd like to know more about how to do the scope compensation on it. Um, otherwise it's made very well. It's, it's a, it's a, uh, quality made product. So there you go. That was my review of the DS212.